Okay, welcome to our coffee talk on behaviorism. I'd like to welcome Ms. Jill Woods, who's going to give us some great insight and information about behaviorism in the classroom. So I'll turn it over to her and have her tell you a little bit about herself and who she is and what she does here at KC. Well, I'm Jill Wood, and I teach the Social Studies Methods courses here at K-State um, in Block C, and I also am the Block C coordinator, so that's um, under my umbrella of duties, and I also teach a secondary Social Studies class, um, the Colloquium class, so I kind of cover elementary Social Studies all the way up to secondary Social Studies here in my position at K-State. Um, I also supervise student teachers and uh, practicum students, and so um, that leads into my other job with the MAT program. I am last, uh, for our first cohort, I was a supervisor. I have my own little eight, eight students. Um, but this semester, I am one of the supervisors of the teaching assistants. So I am kind of the middle level person that is in charge of all of the people that are grading and supervising you throughout the year. So um, so you'll see my name come up in different things, um, you know, just uh, here and there, but I am kind of a point of contact, I guess. Yeah, yeah and she is an excellent resource, so definitely feel free to be in there. She'll be wonderful for you. Um, so let's go ahead and talk a little about, though, about your wonderful experience in classrooms and your exposure to behaviorism. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? What sure. Like? Um, I have a wide variety of experience. I started out in a first grade classroom, and uh, then uh, my experiences led me to a sixth grade classroom. I just kept getting older and older, So I've, and I taught um, uh, language arts, uh, math at the... Um, middle school level and then I ended up teaching high school English and uh, journalism and a little bit of social studies in there um, so just a wide variety of things and and so I have this uh, varied knowledge from yeah. kindergarten all the way up to seniors and Excellent. and so how behaviorism kind of uh, falls in there but I would say that behaviorism is the foundation of a good classroom. It is the foundation of classroom management. And so therefore it has a place in every single grade level, even at the college level. Yes, so. definitely. So when you talk about that foundation, can you tell us some of like those core tenets of behaviorism that you see as kind of foundation? Like what what would we see as teachers in the classroom? Then? Okay, so um, having a structure, having a routine, having rules, having, uh, knowing the expectations that you have for students and, and then um, devising rules that kind of meet those expectations, uh, the positive reinforcement, kind of that reward system, the behavioral system, um, whether it be kind of the, the colored cars or the clips or something where students know where um, where they are on your expectations, if they are meeting your expectations or not. And, and that is that behavior that you're trying to reinforce throughout. You want them to stay at that, that upper level, that, that happy, nice <laughs> level where everybody's following the rules. But they also need to know where that cutoff is. And so having those rules established, and, and that's very important, but also having kind of classroom rewards, um, you know, that go along with that. So not just individual, but classroom. Um, yeah. And also I think that a uh, big thing is just a, a consistency. There needs to be a consistency throughout the, yeah. the classroom. If, they, if these are the rules in this area, then these are also the rules in this area, and I'm going to reinforce the rules. Mm -hmm. The other teachers in the classroom are also going to reinforce the yeah, rules, so exactly. everybody is kind of on the same page. So those are kind of those basic tenets of behaviorism that I see in the classroom. Yeah, I think that's really important too when we get to that behaviorism, seeing that consistency. I think a lot of teachers will start out too with that very kind of external, you know, reinforcement through like either rewards that are tangible, mm -hmm. but the goal hopefully would be moving them more toward that internal type yes. of reward system. Can you maybe talk yes. about how you've seen that in play? That is one of those things where you've got to catch kids being good. Mm -hmm. And and when you uh, just praise, 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 especially at the, at the lower levels, you can really get away with that. Like, oh, I see how Della is doing. Oh, look how she walked so quietly over to her seat and is ready to work. And, and 
and then the other kids were like, oh, you know, she got attention from the teacher, and look at, uh, you know, I want that too. Of course, as you get with older students, that doesn't happen as much. Um, you know, I would say that I see things like, um, I would say things like, you know, this group is, is just really doing a great job and, and giving examples of, tangible examples to them, um, yeah. uh, to the rest of the class. Like, they had this great conversation about this topic, and then that models your expectations to the rest of the groups. Yeah. Um, you know, students as you get older don't necessarily like to be singled out, mm -hmm. and so, you know, giving those group positive reinforcements are, are really good as well. Yeah, I think that's really important too because as like I said, you move up in the grades, their enforcement's gonna look different. You mm -hmm. know, something at a kindergarten level will look very different than a fifth grade level versus like an eighth grade level. Very much so. So um, yeah. I really appreciate you taking the time to share with us some information about behaviorism and how you've seen it apply in the classroom, how you've applied it yourself as a teacher. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for also providing our master students with some insights to what they're gonna see in the future when it comes to working with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciate you attending this coffee talk with us. Sure. I will look forward to seeing you again in the future. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. Thank you.